There's just one place to go for all your spatula needs. Spatula City! Spatula City! A giant warehouse of spatulas for every occasion. Thousands to choose from in every shape, size, and color. And because we eliminate the middleman, we can sell all our spatulas factory direct to you. Where do you go when you want to buy name brand spatulas at a fraction of retail cost? Spatula City! Spatula City! And this weekend only, take advantage of our special liquidation sale. Buy nine spatulas, get the tenth one for just one penny. Don't forget, they make great Christmas presents. And what better way to say I love you than with the gift of a spatula? Spatula City! Spatula City! Hello, this is Cy Greenbloom, president of Spatula City. I like their spatulas so much, I bought the company. Spatula City, seven locations. We're in the yellow pages under spatulas. My, where did you get that lovely spatula? Spatula City, we sell spatulas, and that's all. All right, Matt, we're back with the second and final skit on the UHF soundtrack, Spatula City. Uh, it's an advertisement for a spatula outlet store. It was the only thing recorded <laughs> during the fourth session of the album, which seems so weird. It seems like a real waste of a day <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, and as I did with Gandhi 2, got to give a shout out now to M.G. Kelly, who did the announcer voice uh, for Special yes. City, as far as I know, no relation. Uh, but <laughs> hey, can we, if Matt, if you can flex your Kelly muscle and get MG Kelly real quick on, to join us here? I'll see what I can do. See what you can do. Something that I noticed with this, and I'm not sure about you, this is a little bit different than the than the ad that shows up in the movie. It cuts out the opening part of the ad with the family realizing that they need a spatula. Oh, yes. It just goes right to the spatula city, and yeah. then the music starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where but Gandhi 2 is other... like verbatim. It is ripped straight from the movie. <laughs> like... Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and this is, as we sort of alluded to when we were talking about Gandhi 2, um, this as a sketch, and it's funny because I feel like on paper this should work less well. Yeah. There are so many cutaways here. There are so many switches to the the different occasions when he would give someone a spatula we get the amazing cut to the guy uh the owner of the company uh giving his little like very monotone praise for his oh, spatula you mean uh sly greenblum sly greenblum <laughs> thank you i didn't have his name yeah who who liked the product so much he bought the company yeah um yeah it feels like it needs like i'm oddly surprised that it works so well this i think actually really does just work as a as a sketch on a on an album, at least for me. So you mentioned with Gandhi 2 that these felt like um, Quentin Tarantino drops in his soundtrack. Yes. I think what makes Spatula City work where Gandhi 2 doesn't is that Spatula City feels like the comedy sketch that you could find on like a De La Soul album or like any other uh, album that yeah. has these weird, like a, like a Bloodhound Gang a release or like any of those like kind of goofy albums that they would do these like 30 second weird sketches. It just fits in a way of being like an interruption to the middle of the album yeah. um, in the way that Gandhi doesn't because Gandhi does feel way more like I almost just wish that they, I wish that Gandhi too, wasn't just the audio essentially ripped out of the scene from the movie and that they had reworked it to sound like a radio trailer promo ad. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right, right. Where this yeah, does they feel like a radio ad that you could have heard while driving in your car in the the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, you know what? You're right about that. It actually does read as a radio ad in a different way. You would never hear the trailer for Gandhi 2 audio only like that. But this does make sense. Even in the weird moments where you can tell there should be a visual element you don't get. Um you know, when it like the music cuts and it's like, and what better way to say I love you than with the gift of a spatula? And it cuts to the very tender, like romantic music. Like you you can get listening to it that like, oh, there's definitely a visual element to this that I'm not seeing. But you kind of just don't care because it still works. The other thing that works so hard so much, and I think it actually is more <laughs> noticeable to me listening to it than when I watch the actual commercial, is that the random voices kind of get more manic as they're yelling spatula yes. city throughout yes. it. 
Like, because the first one's just like, Spatula City, Spatula City. And then by the time you get to like the third one, it's like, Spatula City! <laughs> like, it's just like, like they're just, they're, they're, you could write a whole thesis of what's happening behind the scenes uh, with the yes. guys recording those Spatula City yells um, when listening to the track. And then, of course, you do get the little jingle. Spatula City, we sell spatulas. And that's all. <laughs> like, bum TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Hi, friends. The world got you down. Don't be sad. Listen to $2 Late Fee with Zach and Dustin. $2 Late Fee is the podcast that celebrates the best decade of entertainment, the 1980s. We pick a movie and soundtrack from our youth that we loved and see if it holds up today. We also interview your favorite celebrities from that era. All in the spirit of positivity and togetherness. Check us out at $2LateFee.com. I'll tell you what, that little jingle is genius. Oh, it's so good. That that very end. I mean, honestly, like if there was anything, like that's the reason this has to be on this record. Yes. That little jingle at the very end, that like four second long uh, little bit of music <laughs> is so fun. It's so, so, so fun. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's just, again, we are talking about like his, this is a style parody, but it is a style parody of the local not infomercial, but a commercial for like a local small business. And like these ads that, you know, I, I know I'm sure you and I both grew up um, seeing these all the time and I don't see them so much anymore. Although I know they exist because every once in a while, some something goes viral on YouTube or TikTok, and everyone is, is enamored with them again. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm thinking immediately of the uh, living rooms, bedrooms, dinettes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, like well, there's all, the funeral those, like, home one that my one buddy showed me where, the corpse yes, I think jumps, you sent me that. Yeah, it jumps out of the <laughs> casket. It's, yes. It costs how much? <laughs> That's a, that price is high enough to raise the dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, there's a whole mini doc that I'm sure you can find. And before this episode's over, I will finish Googling and find out what it's called. But it was an Ohio furniture store. Mm-hmm. And it was these very abstract commercials where he just hired local college film students to make his commercials and it will mm-hmm. literally be like a woman giving birth and all of a sudden <laughs> it cuts to underneath the the apron and it's just the owner of the store's head pops out between two fake legs <laughs> and he's just like come to my store if you can't get credit approval here you can't get credit approval anywhere like and that was like his catchphrase um, see this is it, it, there's something so again i know we've we've actually talked about it a lot in the context of this album because it's just the nature of UHF. But yeah, you know, I know you and I are both big fans of just general like B movies and super low budget uh, content from over the years. And it's because there's something so, so charming about someone with no money or talent <laughs> trying their absolute hardest to make something like this out of out of like the little bit like we got to promote our business. What can we do to be clever? What can we do to stand out? And people come up with these like little like songs or concepts or whatever it is to try to get people's attention. Yeah. And here I'll show it's you. Rare. It's Norton Furniture. You can look up Norton Furniture commercials. Good news for people that have credit problems. Norton Furniture is here for you. Now, seriously. If you can't get credit in my store, <laughs> you can't get credit anywhere. <laughs> my name is Mark, and you can count on it. See, I mean, that's that's the best. That's the best. And 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 it, what, it's funny. I just was talking to a friend about this. Could potentially be a huge tangent, and I don't want to go down it too much. But I just was on a plane, and on the plane, I watched uh, Cocaine Bear. Yes, which I did not particularly care for i was very and, for how much people loved it i was very let down by a cocaine bear and the reason why is because it is so so difficult to fake 
it's so difficult to do a fake bad movie, right? Because yes. I think that's what they were trying to do. You're trying to do, and you wind up with, again, not to, uh, hey, whatever you like is fine by me, but it reminded me a lot of like Snakes on a Plane or Sharknado or any of these movies that like, if you are trying to make a movie that's so bad it's good, that's, well, that's a That's why that's why Troll can't 2 do is still talked about in a loving way, in the way that Sharknado has already come and gone, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's different. Also, uh, for the Norton Furniture, if you check out some of their stuff, if you Google my name is Mark and you can count on it, you will get the 14 minute short that I saw. It's a documentary about his life Amazing. and the making Amazing. of those commercials that became like a late night staple in Ohio. Uh, there you go. There you go. So, <laughs> I, so I have to. I, I anyway. That's like it's very very difficult to channel that vibe. Like you said, Troll Two movies that are famous for being like so bad they're good. Uh, Troll 2, The Room, those are have that because when you watch it, you can tell that no one was phoning it in. Everyone was trying really, really hard to make that's, something good. That's that fine line is like there is something in a world of overwhelming uh, charmfulness, I will say, yes. where I would rather watch people absolutely fail giving a hundred percent bird demic is a prime example why Birdemic. the room works and nothing else that they have ever made with yep. the cast of the room works like it's yeah. it's that because they were they weren't making a comedy they were trying to make a serious movie and then when they realized they made a comedy at least they were smart enough and savvy enough to run with it and make their money yeah <laughs> which is great i'm very i mean i n- that's fantastic that's a great story of of how that it's, all went down it's but, what makes but the it's films so that i hard. show people at my house when i do weird ass movie night when we sit down yeah. and we watch plan nine from outer space the robot monster yeah. like even these mm-hmm. like it's what the mystery science theater 3000 movies pull from is like exactly. there's something exactly. charming about trying your best absolutely failing having no malicious intent like no like it's just like people wanted to make a movie. They really wanted to make a movie, and they they went and made. And they did. Did you ever watch Mission Hill? No. Uh, are you familiar with the show Mission Hill, like at all? No, I'm not. Okay, so Mission Hill was. Do you remember that like brief period of time where like UPN would make cartoons and nobody would watch them, and then like yes. ten years later they would find their way onto Adult Swim. Yes. Um, Mission Hill was one of those uh, Adult Swim. Uh, once it was a WB show that ran for one season, and then wow. like two years later, Adult Swim grabbed it. Uh, it's Brian Posehn, Tom Kenny, uh, a couple other people. Wow, the theme oh, song it. is Italian Leather Sofa by Cake. Yeah, oh my god, I can't believe I haven't heard of this. Oh, you would love it. But the very, very last episode is actually like a beautiful episode. Um, so it's all about like they never say it's New York, but they're living in a New York type place. And yep. they have these two roommates who are uh, an openly gay couple. And one is like a big jacked guy. And the other one is like a skinny movie theater projectionist that's voiced by Tom Kenny. So the final episode was called Plan 9 from Michel- Mission Hill or How How I Married a Gay Man from Outer Space. And it was about <laughs> how the youngest kid becomes obsessed with movies and he starts hanging out with the projectionist. And he's learning about the art of filmmaking and like learns to appreciate all these huge movies. And then one day they're doing a special screening of a film that they thought was lost. And it turns out that that film was directed by the projectionist and it's how he met his husband. But he's like actively tried to hide the movie because it was such a failure of a film. And it's like them showing the movie and it becoming this cult sensation, but him being ashamed of it, like him, like feeling like they're laughing at me and then being like, no, they're laughing along with, like they can tell that you cared. Like, yeah. like if you didn't care, they wouldn't love it as much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. So it's, it's very. It, I that episode alone. Like, even if you watch it without any context, you will absolutely adore it. No, that sounds like it. a show I have to check out. Yeah, for sure. It would, um, it anyway, would be up your alley. But yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, so th- that was a tangent. But the the point being that I wanted to make here is that, and this is obviously a smaller version of it. But in this context, I think Al does a really good job of channeling this type of a thing. Yeah. This absurd, clearly super small, low budget, no budget. We have to make a commercial for our store that sells spatulas and that's all. And we're going to do it. And, and the way that it it cuts to the different occasions, the way it cuts to the awkward, the super awkward, again, as we said, Cy Greenblum, 
who introduces himself and is like, you can see him like, again, not, this is not for the, uh, for the album version, but if you watch the video, that actor does it really well where he just delivers this line so blankly and is constantly looking off screen, clearly like trying to read this script or whatever. He looks very nervous and he's trying to get this right. Hello, this is Cy Greenblum, president of Spatula City. Yeah. I like their spatula so much. I bought the company. Like those characters that he's trying to channel in this is it it really works. Um, I, 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 and then, of course, the absurdity as well. Just the uh, spatula city now with seven locations. <laughs> <laughs> and they also throw in on the as just a visual gag that they are open till midnight, which I really appreciate. I mean, it's it's great. I think that there's a reason why for some reason people maybe not as obsessed with Al and UHF as us who've only casually seen the movie. Specialist mm-hmm. City is always this standout thing that almost everybody knows. Even if they were just flipping through the channels and it was on Comedy Central, he nailed this ad so beautifully that like it sticks out in everybody's brain. I, I think the two things that any person who knows Al would know immediately about UHF without having seen the movie in a long time, are Spatula City and You Get to Drink from the Fire Hose. Yes. I think those are like the two things that everybody would like. It's like instantly in your mind um, what that whole like setup is. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, um, yeah, no, this is great. And again, this also feels like um, in a different world, this could have been an Al TV sketch. A thousand percent. Um, and I feel like it makes me wish a little bit so gandhi 2 was borderline but i love i I really do love little sketches and bits like this and i understand that for any record he makes that's not rooted in a film exactly like this it wouldn't make quite as much sense but i almost do wish that because this is it we're we're talking about this is the last sketch like this that will appear on a weird al record ever and i a part of me does wish that he did a little bit more of it. He never, it was always, all of his albums are very musical and the music is the whole focus and they're not sketch comedy records at all. But hearing something like this makes me think that if he had wanted to, he could have made albums like this and they would have been fantastic. Yeah, no, you know I, I agree. Mean? Like I said it in the Gandhi 2 episode, but again, the the town talk segment, I think would have translated so beautifully because it's- yeah voiceover and Al reacting to what the voiceover yeah. saying. It would have it yeah. would have worked in a in And a it's funny way. because uh, you know in later years people who made comedy records like Adam Sandler has bits like this on his like comedians do stuff like this all the time and in a way I, as I'm saying it like it makes Al more unique that he has always been at least on his records music first. Yeah. Like that's the well, most that's important the thing. thing. And we've I, talked about it before he never the music is always so deadly serious and the recording and the process that they go through on making these records is so serious that maybe this type of thing out of the context of a movie just is goes against that too much. Yeah. I mean that's why you brought up Sandler I'll his probably his least popular album is my favorite one, which is "What's Your Name." That's all music, no sketches. All music. It's just him. He became more famous for the sketches, for sure. Yeah, a thousand percent. There's, you know, occasionally people reference the songs, but more than often than not, they talk about the goat or Tollbooth Willie or Respect mm-hmm. or like any of these like ones that just kind of dug their heels into your memory banks and it's you couldn't true. get them Other out. than Hanukkah song, I think you'd probably be hard pressed to find someone who could name a Adam Sandler. Yeah, maybe tune. the only other one would maybe be like Lunch Lady Land because of like, like yeah, the ones that a, were like for the SNL average sketches. person, that's a stretch, right? Yeah. Like yeah. it's, but yeah, it is, it's very interesting. Again, we're not going to rank these, but it's worth, it was definitely worth doing the episodes on each one of them. Absolutely. Giving them Absolutely. their individual flowers as the kids say. Yeah, (laughs) I'm a huge fan of this. And again, this on this record, like I'm going back and forth now on the same idea. Like a a part of me loves hearing this in the middle of an Al record. I understand and I actually do respect that he's just all about the music, generally speaking. But what a great little break this is in the uh, in the the listening to this record. Like every time Spatula City starts, it makes me smile instantly. And hearing the wonderful walking bass line, just the the uh, the uh, old school like jazz um, that's a very the the walking baseline makes me think of the don't whiz on the electric fence <laughs> yes. sketch from Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like it's the hi hat, hard. like super subtle jazz, and it's just that walking baseline the whole time. Yeah. It also he uses that a lot 
it's a little jazz like cliche that he loves to reference. He uses that same element in a lot of his uh, polkas. He yes. does the little jazz breakdown where at a certain point in the middle of it, suddenly it's just like, doom, 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 doom. Yeah, he does <laughs> and, love that uh, jazzy bass. He, the bass walk. Always, always, always. Well, Matt, we might not be ranking Spatula City, but next week we also might not be ranking a song. We'll have to figure <laughs> that out. Um, well, and despite that it won't be on the list, I hope I made it clear that in my heart rankings, Spatula City ranks high. Yes. I, I, I This is a, a great, 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 sketch and in the world of al's sketch comedy i think this ranks very very high up i agree maybe not as a song but maybe one day we'll rank his sketches oh, that sounds all two very of them intimidating. Yeah. All t- <laughs> i can spoil no, that LTV, for you right now everything. spatula city one gandhi two at number two <laughs> all right new list but we're gonna wait till we get through everything else and then we'll, maybe maybe you'll change your mind about gandhi two by the time we get through it's, mandatory it's possible anything can happen listening to the Geekscape Network. 